and welcome to I Flip for Math, MathCast Lesson 6-5, Order of Operations. I'm Mrs. Gooding and our quote today is not really written by me, but you're going to hear me say it a lot during algebra. It's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and that is the acronym PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, and we'll find out what that stands for later, but please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is how we're going to memorize it. Our learning goal today is to evaluate a numerical expression with more than one operation. That's me. <laughs> Here's our individual lesson learning goals. Memorize PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. It also stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division, addition, and subtraction. We're going to use PEMDAS to find the value of each expression in this lesson. So we have new vocabulary today, and that's order of operations. When you see a lot of different operations, addition and subtraction and division and multiplication in one expression, the problem is if you solve it in just order as you go along, you'll get a different answer than if you solve it using the order of operations. So instead of working it from left to right, we work specific operations first. So when we're finding the value of an expression or solving it, we're going to solve using a very specific order, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which stands for parentheses, exponents, multiply or divide, whichever comes first, and next, add or subtract, whichever comes first. That means that in a problem, if you see division before multiplication, you would do it first. If you see multiplication before division, you would do that first. But it will always come before either addition or subtraction. Here's an example. There's our PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Aren't you getting tired of hearing me say it? It's going to start running through your head over and over and over. So that's the expression that we're going to solve. If we did it in order, remember, we're going to come up with a very different answer, but we always solve it using the order of operations so that every time someone solves an expression, they get the same answer as another person who would solve it. Let's go ahead and try that now. So I wrote our hint here, PEMDAS, and I wrote it vertically so that it's in the order of the steps that we're doing it. There's parentheses, there's exponents. Remember, an exponent looks like this. That tells us how many times to write the number three. We just did that in a lesson the other night. So that would be three times three is nine. Um, parentheses are these things. Multiplication or division, whichever comes first and addition or subtraction, whichever comes first. So as we're looking at this problem, the first thing we want to solve are the parentheses, which right here is 6 plus 2. So we're just going to keep rewriting this problem, but solving it in specific steps. So we're going to write the 3 here. And then what's in parentheses? 6 plus 2. 6 plus 2 is 8. So I'll go ahead and solve that. And then write the rest of the problem exactly as it is around the parentheses. Now, the next step is to use exponents, but we don't have any exponents um, right here. And the next step is to use multiplication or division, whichever comes first. And you probably don't know this, but remember how we talked about, um, like if you write a number right next to a letter, it means to multiply? Well, it's the same thing when you write a number next to parentheses. So that would mean we would multiply 3 times 8, which would be... 24. Now that's not the only multiplication in this problem, but we do it first because it comes first. Just like we read left to right when we're reading a book, we read our math problems left to right. So the next multiplication problem in the lesson is 12 times 2, and that's 24. And now we've done all of our multiplication or division, so we're going to do our addition or our subtraction. And we don't have any addition, but our subtraction is 24 minus 24, which equals zero. So the answer to this would be zero. And you solved it. Oops. Okay. So now let's try some practice problems. So we're going to do some practice problems. On each problem you're going to probably want to write PEMDAS vertically before that problem or at the top of your journal page so that you can remember what order the steps go in. And every time you write it down instead of going back and looking at the previous one just say to yourself Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Here's number one. Go ahead and write that problem in your journal, solve it using PEMDAS, and push play when you're ready. 
Did you write 56? Let's see how we did that. So I've written down our expression. I want to point something out to you. This is probably the last year that you will see the multiplication symbol that looks like an X used as your, to tell you to multiply because it does look like the number X sometimes, which is also used as a variable in algebra quite a bit. So they'll generally start using this symbol right here. But it's also why when you have a number right outside of parentheses, you multiply, or why when we're writing like 2x, that doesn't mean 2 times. That means 2 and the variable x. It does mean 2 times the variable x, but we just know that 2, a number next to a letter, means to multiply. Or we could use that little symbol there, the little dot. But we're still in fifth grade. We're still using this as our multiplication symbol. So if we use PEMDAS to solve this expression, we're going to solve first for the numbers in the parentheses. And we work from left to right. So we're going to do this one first. So we're going to do 3 plus 4, which equals 7. And then we'll just bring down our multiplication symbol. And then we're going to solve for this set of parentheses. 3 plus 5 is 8. So now our next step is to use exponents, but we don't have any. And then we multiply or divide, whichever comes first. And there isn't any division, so we're going to multiply. 7 times 8 is 56. And then we're done because we don't have any addition or subtraction. That was a pretty easy one. Let's try another one. Number two, write that problem in your journal and solve it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 34? Let's see how we did that one. Do you get why I write the multiplication division on the same level in the order of steps? It's because it depends on which one comes first. You don't do them. It's not that multiplication always comes before division. It's whatever you see first in the problem. So let's go ahead and work out this problem. We're going to do our parentheses first. So 3 plus 2 is 5. And then we'll bring down everything else around it. And then our next step is to use exponents, but we don't have any. Next step is multiply or divide, whichever comes first. And multiplying is in this one. So we're going to do 8 times 5 is 40. Bring down everything that's left, the, symbol, the operation symbol and the number. And then our next step is to do addition and subtraction. So we're going to subtract. 40 minus 6 is 34. These are really fun to do. And some of them get really complicated. So we'll find some really challenging ones for those of you who need a little bit more of a challenge. Well, now we're going to do some practice evaluating expressions. So in this next expression, this is kind of a different type of algebra that we're doing. Um, it'll all fit together in the end, but we're doing some little different parts and pieces of it. Um, for this one, we're going to use x equals 16 and y equals 4. That means we're going to substitute that number for the variable when we see it. And here it is, number 3, 4x minus 2y. Go ahead and substitute those numbers for the variable. Push play when you're ready. Did you write 56? Let's see how we did that. So we're going to write our little PEMDAS up here just in case we need it. We might when we're solving that expression. Now we remember that when we see a number right next to a variable, it means to multiply. So this means 4 times x. Do you see why we don't like to use that multiplication symbol, really? And then 2 times y. Sometimes in algebra problems, we even have x and y right next to each other. So that can be really confusing. But in this case, we're going we're gonna to still continue to do that because you will see that. So um, we're going to substitute x with 16 here. So we're going to have 4 times 16 minus 2 times, and this says y equals 4. So we're going to put 4 here. And now we're going to solve our first multiplication problem first. So 4 times 16, I'll come over here and do 4 times 16. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 1 is 4, 5, 6. So 4 times 16 is 64. And then we're going to solve this multiplication problem, the next one. 2 times 4, I know that's 8. And bring down our subtraction problem. And then we're doing 64 minus 8, which equals 50. Six. If you weren't sure, you could come over here and work it. There's nothing wrong with working it out to make sure you get your answer right. 
These are pretty simple problems, so you wouldn't want to make mistakes on your math here when you have such a, a good chance of getting that problem correct. It's time to challenge yourself. Grayson bought three boxes of pencils that contain 20 pencils each and four boxes of pens that contain 10 pens each. Write an expression that represents the total number of pencils and pens Grayson bought. If you want to, you can even decide what your variables are going to stand for and make up a problem that solves that. I won't have the answer for that posted in class because you're using made up numbers, but um, you can certainly try it and see what you can come up with. Come back tomorrow to check your answer in class. Finishing up, go ahead and go back and make sure you understand what we're doing. We used PEMDAS today and we also substituted numbers for variables. And I think it's all fun when you start doing it, but if you don't understand it, you need to write down any questions that you still have and write down in your journal if you're a one, a two, or a three level in your learning. Awesome Aunt Sally, you've completed lesson 6-5, Order of Operations. We're gonna do some hard stuff after this. You'll love it. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.